it's your girl miss tony and i am in week 31 of my 40 year old pregnancy journey thanks so much for joining me so what's new this week the baby is actually still around the same size as last week so that's about the size of a coconut which is about 16 inches and now about three and a half pounds so last week was about three and a quarter this week is about three and a half pounds so still getting bigger every week every day <laughs> Um, and what's interesting is I'm feeling the baby hiccup now. And so, and I feel it like multiple times a day. So it feels kind of weird because you, I have baby moving all day and I feel different movements, but the hiccups are different. The hiccups feel like a tap, but they're in like this rhythm. It's, you know, you can tell it's a hiccup. I know it sounds weird. Like, how would you know if your baby's hiccuping, but it just, it's rhythmic and it's like, okay, baby got some soul, baby got a little rhythm already. No, but yeah, that's how you know that it's not a regular movement. It's a hiccup. Um, doctors don't know why. Researchers don't know why. They they say the baby's lungs are still developing and they're drinking amniotic fluid. So they're practicing how to breathe once they get on the outside. And old wives tales will say that any child who hiccups is growing. So anytime Kennedy or Cameron have the hiccups, which they do off and on, you know, at random times, then I tell them, oh, that means you're getting bigger, you're growing. So they love it. And when they have the hiccups, they're like, oh, I'm getting big. So I believe it. I mean, I really believe it. I know it's an old wives tale, but I think it's just a byproduct of growth. And that's what's going on every day with the baby. So I think now the baby's just big enough for me to feel it because they say the hiccups start around nine weeks. I didn't feel it at all in the pregnancy until now, which is more common. Most women don't feel it until they're at the third trimester and they're towards the end of the third trimester. So feeling a baby hiccup is too cute though. I think they say two, three times a day you may feel the baby hiccuping. So that's absolutely normal. So remember I told you guys every now and then I do a segment called Did You Know? So it's just going to be like interesting things that you may or may not have known, especially you sis, if you haven't had babies yet, um, you might be interested in knowing some of these little, little facts, little unknown facts. So this one is actually one that's commonly known. Um, it's your hair and nail growth. So I just want to tell you my personal experience though with both. <laughs> so my nails, I, I kind of need to fill in at this point, but my nails grow like crazy. I cut them down every time I go and get my nails done. My girl's always like, are you sure? They're growing so nice and so long and so thick. I know my nails and I know from the past two babies that once I let them grow long, they start getting brittle. So I'm still taking prenatal vitamins every day and that's what's giving it some of the strength that it has, but it's not a long-term thing. And so for me, um, I would rather have, you know, a, an average length than the long natural length that I actually do have right now, um, just to avoid having to go back to the shop because my nail broke because it got brittle at the top <laughs> and it snagged on something and broke. The other thing is with women's hair. So uh, this one I think is more commonly known. A lot of women um, will have nice growth when they're pregnant and their uh, new growth will be thick and y'all can see my new growth <laughs> is nice and thick and it's also very healthy so that's a nice another thing is that I don't have like split ends or anything um, the hair just grows in really nicely however <laughs> you may have also heard that a lot of women's hair thins out after they give birth so during the whole pregnancy you take advantage of all this beautiful lushness in your hair but when you deliver the baby that's when you start to lose it um, again they attribute it to the hormones the fact that you're taking prenatal vitamins every day so you're getting all these extra nutrients um, and your body's producing an extra nutrients as well for the baby that you're actually being able to benefit from and so it's very nice for that nine ten month time frame now for me after I have my babies my hair doesn't come out immediately and usually i have braids so you guys might start seeing me with a couple braid styles um usually i like to wait until i get off work corporate america um so i like to wait until i go on maternity leave to start getting my little braid styles so i'll probably be doing that here soon so you can obviously track like your growth even when you have braids in your hair um and then when you get the braids taken out you can also just see if your ends are stripped or if, if they're starting to get split and so for me i've noticed that even that whole year 
that I've after I've had the baby my hair actually is still growing so for me I'm, I'm still breastfeeding and that's what it's attributed to at that point actually I'm still taking prenatal vitamins too so um, that's something also you may not know is that your some doctors my doctor always recommends continuing to take prenatal vitamins even though they're prenatal um, she tells me to take them postnatally while I'm breastfeeding so I can still make sure I'm getting all the vitamins that I need and then passing that on to the baby. And so during that time, my hair is still growing. I'm breastfeeding, I got all these nutrients in me, I'm taking prenatal vitamins, I'm still getting all this nice growth. So I actually get to benefit for like two years, you know, if it's the year after that I'm breastfeeding and then the nine, 10 months that I'm pregnant, that's a long time and I get to have all this nice pretty hair. And then it's all over. It's so sad too, I'm not even exaggerating right now y'all like, I cried when my hair started coming out after I was done breastfeeding with Kennedy and then it happened again with Cameron. So I will say it was the worst after Kennedy, my first one. Um, I stopped breastfeeding her, I think I want to say around January and I remember by March my hair was coming out in clumps y'all. Like little, literal clumps. Like, like as if I was a cancer patient or something not even trying to be funny but literally it was coming out in clumps so I remember with Kennedy one day um I was sitting on the couch with her and she was again probably 15 months old at this point and she was acting like she was doing my hair she had like a little comb a, a wide tooth comb but she was just going through my hair and as she was combing it hair was coming out in the comb she looked at me and gave it back to me she's a baby but she's was looking at me like what is this Calvin was sitting on the other couch and I showed it to him and I literally had to like run upstairs and go to my bathroom I was freaking out because I was like what is happening like I had heard that with friends who had babies that their hairline thinned after they had kids and honestly that's what happened with me after Cameron it was more of a hairline thinning but with Kennedy I literally lost hair in clumps y'all <laughs> To the point that I stopped doing my hair, literally stopped doing my hair because I was like, okay, I'll put oil on my scalp every day and then I'm not going to touch it. If I put my fingers through, I'm going to have hair on my fingers. If I use a wide tooth comb, same thing. And I was scared to even like wash it because I was thinking, oh my gosh, when I see all that hair going down the drain, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be sane. Like, oh my gosh. So I didn't even wash my hair for like a month. I know it sounds gross, but so at this point, um, I started wearing just little uh, half wigs and I would just have like the front of my hair out and um, I would wrap up the rest. I didn't even braid it. I was like, I'm not even going to braid my hair because I don't even want the tension of braiding my hair. I did that for a month and I went to go see my girl, Tammy. Um, she owns her own studio, Aqua Hair Studio out here in the Valley. And she got me right. <laughs> she got it back healthy again. Uh, she did her magic, but I will never forget. <laughs> like as women, we love our glory in our hair. It doesn't matter how you wear it. When you are a black woman, we have so many styles and variations and ways that we can wear our hair. But to see your hair literally falling out is like so heart wrenching. It's, it's sad. So I actually uh, had to get over it. I had to think like, okay, it's just hair. It's just hair. Like it'll grow back. It's just hair. And uh, Tammy helped me just get through that whole season and uh, grow my hair back. And so it was able, it took months, but it was able to get healthy again until I had Cammy and waited a year after with her breastfeeding again it wasn't as bad it wasn't clumps this time but it was definitely thinning and it was for some reason it was more so I can't remember what side it was but it was one side over the other and so I was at the point where I was starting to get sew-ins again and she had to uh, start doing my part on the other side because there was so much like balding it wasn't balding completely but you know there was so much thinning that you could start seeing like little too much scalp it was just too much scalp showing <laughs> so she was like okay we're gonna have to flip this to the other side and start doing your parts over here <sighs> the struggle is real but again your hair will grow back so <laughs> it's not the end of the world like I felt like it was the last thing I wanted to discuss this week is breast pumps so I contacted my insurance I have Edna um, and they gave me a whole list of you can go to a few different suppliers and then you have options with each supplier about which breast pump that you can get for free 
And so with my last two pregnancies, I got the same exact pump. And usually I'm not a creature of habit like that. Like usually I would want to try the newest and the best thing, but I got a Medela pump in style and I loved it with the first pregnancy. So I just ended up getting the same one with my second pregnancy. But this time around, I'm going to consider trying something new but I need to hear from y'all. I need y'all feedback. I need some comments. I need y'all to inbox me. Tell me what your thoughts are on which pump you used or are currently using and why, because this list is extensive and I don't know which one to pick, but I'm looking at, um, another Modella. I can't lie. Um, it looks similar to the one that I already have um, two of them <laughs> that I've been using. And what I'm going to do is use that one that I had from Cameron, my two-year-old, um, as my backup. So I'm going to keep that one in my car. Just, I'm going to make sure I clean it, sanitize it, um, get new tubing, get all new parts for it. Um, but I'm going to keep that one as my backup anyway. So I will be using that one again, but I'm considering, um, either a Freemie, a Lansano, or a Spectra as well. But those are the three that I narrowed it down to just based on a little bit of research that I've done. Um, and the Spectra, it's the S2 Plus or the S1 Plus. I think I was considering the blue one, the S1. I don't remember why. I have to make sure I have hospital grade um, when you guys are giving recommendations. And I also need to double pump at the same time. My whole pumping process is, is a process. <laughs> and if I decide to do some videos... Uh, when I actually have the baby, I haven't decided yet if I'll even have time or energy to do that. But if I do decide to uh, continue this page and do some videos after I have the baby, then I will definitely be focusing a uh, part of that journey on breastfeeding and pumping because it is a journey. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And the Lansano Smart Pump 2.0 is a particular one. And then the Free Me Hands Free Deluxe Independence one. Um, that's the one that's like a mobile one that you don't have to hook up to, a, you know, a machine and to a wall. You can kind of use that one on the go. I do know a couple people who tried that one a, a couple years ago when that one first launched. Um, and I've heard some good things and I've heard some bad things. Um, with this baby, I am planning to be home most of the time because again, I'll be on a very long maternity leave. Looking forward to that. And if my school allows it, I'm going to try to continue to take classes online as well. So I'll most likely be at home instead of on the road. Now with my other two, I had to plan for a pump that I could use in both instances because I know I was going to be home. I would think I was home for six months with, with each of them. I knew I'd be home for that time frame. But then once you hit the six month mark, that's when, you know, the baby doesn't need as much milk, but you're pumping more. So I was breastfeeding a lot because I was at home with the baby. Then six, six and a half months, I went back to work and I had to pump every day and I had to pump. I had to create my own schedule based on my work schedule. And so um, I would be in the car, literally y'all, I would be in the car driving and pumping all at once, <laughs> just making sure that my day was going accordingly so I could get as much work done, but not forget to pump because there are repercussions if you don't pump when you need to and you need to get that milk out. So I'll talk all about that later on <laughs> during that breastfeeding journey. But for now, I would love to have your recommendation. If you've used Medela and you've stuck to Medela, um, I feel you and I, I just may do the same thing. Uh, here's another thing why I was looking at the Spectra though. So the Spectra is supposed to have a better suction and I need that. Um, I also love Medela's parts though. I love how Medela's connector uh, works with different flanges. So with the ones that come with the Modella, they're too small. All three of them are too small for me. And so I had to get the Pumping Pals extra large one, which worked fantastically with both times that I was breastfeeding. And I was able to use that flange with the Modella pump. And so I love that I could have interchangeable pieces and accessories that I could still use with the Modella pump because it's a very high grade pump. But again, I hear Spectra's better. So if I could use the Modella pieces and the pump and pal flange and connect that to the spectra then i would probably go with that option i know it sounds like a lot but um i i will want to get the quality of that pump the suction um in addition to just i love the modella bottles i mean i love all of their stuff i love with the modella bras they have these strapless uh bras where you can put the two flanges in and pump at the same time like i just love all things modella but if i can get a stronger pump 
then I would rather go with that and then use the Mandela part. So anyway, um, if you have any advice on that, please share. I would love to hear it. Well, that's it for this week. I have to show you guys my 31 week bump first before I let you go. And there he or she is. Feeling good and hoping to continue on feeling this good <laughs> throughout the rest of pregnancy. Um, I've, I've done well with my last two as well, all the way until the end. Um, and so I try to stay active at this point to make sure that, um, you know, the baby's going to drop when it's time and just to make sure that I'm ready physically, um, uh, when the time comes. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for joining me on week 31 of my 40 year old pregnancy journey. Subscribe for more content next week. I'll have more updates for you. And again, I want to hear from you. So comment and like as well. Um, share your experiences with me. I'd love to hear them. Thanks for joining me.